So most molecules in biology have got more than one group that can ionize, and, and amino acids and proteins are great examples of this. So let's look at what happens to an, an amino acid when the pH changes there. So I've got a generic amino acid here, and in this form here, it's in the fully protonated form. So we've got the amino group protonated, and we've got the carboxylic acid group protonated. For the moment, we're going to assume that it's a, it's a simple amino acid where the side group, the R group, cannot ionize. So we've just got two groups that can ionize. And as we go across in this direction here, we see that the first thing that's happened is the carboxylic acid group has ionized. And then as we move further across to the right-hand side, we see that the amino group has ionized as well. It's deionized, if you like. Okay. So we've got these three forms of the amino acid here. And these two ionizations, they happen at different pHs. They've got different pKa's. So the pKa of this equilibrium here is at 9.6, and this one here is at 2.3. Okay. So let's imagine what would happen if we had a solution of this amino acid. And, and, and let's keep it simple. Let's call it glycine. So glycine, the, the, the R group, is simply a proton. It's simply H. That's the simplest amino acid you can get. And let's say that we've got the solution of glycine and we added some sodium hydroxide to it. What would happen to the pH? Well, let's put some numbers in. So let's imagine that we had 100 mL of 0.1 moles per litre glycine. So we've got 100 mL of 0.1 moles per litre of the glycine, of the amino acid, and to that we're going to add 100 mL of 0.03 moles per litre sodium hydroxide. So what will the pH be of this solution, this glycine and this sodium hydroxide mix? Well, let's calculate out the absolute numbers of, 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 of molecules here. So 100 mils of 0.1 moles per litre glycine. So that's 0.1 litres times 0.1 moles per litre. So that's 0.01 moles of glycine. And 0.1 litres times... 0.03 is equal to 0.003 moles of, of, of sodium hydroxide. So the sodium hydroxide is going to remove protons from glycine. It's going to remove protons from, from the glycine. The hydroxide ions are going, to, are going to remove a proton to form water. And so we're going to end up with this form of the glycine. So it's going to create this anionic form, this negatively charged form there. And how much of it is it going to make? Well, every hydroxide ion is going to remove one proton. So if we've got 0.03 moles of hydroxide ions, we're going to end up with 0.003 moles of the anionic form of the glycine. So if we start with 0.01 moles, but 0.003 moles has been converted across here, we must be left with 0.007 moles. Okay, 0.01 minus 0.003 is 0.007 here. Okay. So, what's the pH of this solution? Well, we need to invoke the Hensel Hasselbalch equation. So, pH is equal to the pKa plus the log 10 of A minus divided by HA, and the pH is what we're trying to find out. The pKa, well it's got to be this pKa, doesn't it? Though it's got to be going from here to here, so the pH is equal to 9.6 plus the log 10. A minus is the deprotonated form, so A minus is this form over here. There, so that's 0 0.003, 3, and HA is the protonated form, so it's this form here, 0 0.007. So if we put that into our calculator there, then um, that's going to be plus the log 10 of 0 0.003. 
fourth tree, so it's going to be 9.6 plus the log 10 of 0.03, which is equal to uh, 9.6 plus minus 0.37, which is equal to 9.2, or 9.23, if we're going to be accurate there. So what that means is if we take this much glycine and we add this much sodium hydroxide to it, the pH is going to be 9.23.